All right, this is Jeter's fate. Jeter was warned over and over by the administration that he would have to sit in the hole, but he was adamant about going back out. He was pressing them so hard. He wanted out and he forced the investigator in the administration and signed a liability waiver and they let him back out on the yard. He forced him, man. <laughs> His ass went back out there like a fool. And as soon as population came out for outside recreation, Maniac was able to talk to his people through the window or whatever. The contract got put out. I'll present a story later in my videos on how we communicate inside prison walls while we're in segregation or whatever. Before the day was over, Jeter had his jaw broken four different places. A broke leg, a broke rib, maybe more, I don't know. He had some type of internal bleeding. He was messed up. So he had to be wired up for six months, his jaw. And then after six months, it was messed up. It, it, it healed improperly or something, something happened. And they had to cut him from ear to ear again and do a jaw surgery. They put four titanium plates inside of his jaw, sealed it up, and he was wired up again for six more months. I don't know how anybody could sit there like, For six months that has got to be pure agony but they beat him up pretty bad because he's a rat and we know who told on me so that's why it happened now what i can't understand is my cell partner my cell partner knew my business and just because of that man they messed him up too they jumped him and hurt him pretty bad and i felt bad about it i felt sorry for him because i know he didn't tell on me there's no evidence to show it. They just did it out of spite to teach other people in the future of why you do not tell on people. Um, It's wrong, man, but that's what they do in there. His jaw also was broken and wired up. It's pretty crazy, but you know, that's the signature. If they jump somebody that was snitching, they make sure they break their jaw. It's just a symbol. I was sorry that happened to him, but that is kind of his fault for getting too deep and involved in my business. He wasn't part of my plan or anything, but gangs. In the early 2000s, gangs were in their infancy in the Virginia prisons. There were very few. The gang members that were in there were from up north, from the west coast. They were real deal official, man. And they had to hide under the radar. They had to lay low because if the administration even heard one peep that they was a gang member, they were being shipped to Red Onion. When I met Maniac in 2003 and into 2004, gangs were flooding the prisons. There were so many of them. The numbers shot sky high and it was too many for the administration to continue transferring. So they just left them alone and the gangs have took over the prison system, period. Maniac was my selection back when it was because he had a network. Gangs are like a network. Um, they can make sure my money gets paid. Um, they make sure people pay for what they get. Um, and if that person checks in and goes to a different building or prison, they got people there to, to greet them as soon as they get there. So I chose Maniac because of that. And plus, he was real, man, 100% good people. Um, I wouldn't have chosen one of the new modern-day prison-born gang members because most of them are just hiding from something. I don't care what people say. I was there, I seen what goes on. I know what it's about. My selection, maniac, he makes sure bills get paid. He made sure the stuff gets sold and I didn't have to do any of the work. And if there was any issues, it would be dealt with. And I didn't have to do anything but wave my hand, that's it. To this day, old maniac still in prison. He's no longer a gang member though. He's now Muslim and he's currently at Greensville Correctional Center and I communicate with him periodically. <laughs>